Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. In today's episode of Groundworks Construction, I will be showing you how to build a simple rover that is using Infernal Robotics. It makes it nice and easy and foldable uh, so that you can basically fold it while you're traveling to the other planet and ex extend it once you get on the target planet and start roving. So, first of all, we will need a couple of batteries. A probe core, obviously. I always start with this Octo-2 and two small batteries. Then I put the command seat and just for make sure that I have placed it correctly, I put on a 90 degrees angle. Okay. <clears throat> then this looks about right. Then the next thing that I'm looking for is cubic octagonal strut and I will use that to build the structure which will be to build the chassis of the rover. I typically would extrude three small struts out before I start going to the sides. So something like that. Okay, then you want to put them at 90 degrees angle and just for beautification reasons I try to align it that the edges align. Note that at the moment I'm not building in symmetry because I first want to build one side before I duplicate it. Okay, and I think I'll build probably one more out, yeah, like this. I'm also using constantly 90 degree angle to make sure that mine parts line up nicely. Okay, like that. Now the next thing that I would be looking for it would be basically a piston. And this is the part of the infernal robotics which is hydraulic pistons. And I would put uh, three pistons that go into each other uh, and I just place them here for example before I resize them because I'm using a twig scale so I'm putting a segment A one quarter like that then I would be taking another one which will be segment B one quarter and put it inside I first rescale it okay and here is sometimes it can be a little bit finicky so segment C segment B there we go okay now just putting it inside so that it aligns <coughs> I'm roughly aligning it by matching the balls uh, if somebody knows how to remove this uh, node ball for for aligning please post it in the comments okay that's about right so basically I have now three pistons that extend one into each other. So let us test this. Okay, perfect. That is what I was looking for. And now I will put this construction basically here. I just have to make sure that it's properly aligned. Zoom in a little bit and just making it again in the dead center. Perfect. Then I copy and do the same for the rear. Now this is important because on the top of this construction we will be placing yet another small cubic octagonal strut which will be carrying the wheels and that one will be extending. Now let me see... Mm, yeah, strut. Okay, here we go. And that's the basically idea. So when it's folded, it is it is uh, very compact, and when it extends, you have plenty of headroom to rove, and this makes your rovers much more stable on any planet, basically. Yeah. So this is like this. So this basically now is what the chassis looks like.
OK. And now I will duplicate this design. So put it into symmetry. Let me see. OK. Now I'll just bring it here at 90 degrees, not 60, and mirror symmetry, not radial. Because I bon both want the front to be front in both cases. Yeah. So you see, this is how the chassis will extend, making our rover very, very stable. Uh, what? Um, okay, whatever. Okay, time to look for the wheels. Um, or actually, I think, let me see, uh, let me see, wheels, 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 yeah. Hmm, hold on. Ah, yes. Actually, let's put the RTGs first, because we need something to generate power. And if you're using solar panels and you plan to rove on atmospheres, you will lose the sol solar panels that I have already painfully experienced. So I put basically two RTGs one to on top of each other. They're clipping a little, but not that much. So. Uh, then we put the wheels and here you I disable symmetry because it doesn't make sense. I was trying first to play with the mirror symmetry but for some reason it I always got reverted so I decided not to go with the symmetry but align them visually and yeah you can see it was kind of making my life miserable so okay now just turn it the way I want it and I usually press all the buttons before, before I find and now I'm making sure that the front edges align basically so that I know how I will place the second wheel. Copy, same thing, both in terms of rotation and finding the right angle, yeah. And now aligning the front wheel as well. I found that lining up edges makes for a good method on how to ensure that everything is symmetrical and yeah, properly placed. Okay. I know that the whole time I'm keeping the 90 degrees angle to avoid vertical and horizontal shifts. So it's kind of always in one line. That's it. And that's our rover base. So now what we want to add is the lights, uh, just, you know, in case we, some because if you land on a night time, some planets can be very, very dark. Okay, and from the front lights, I use these lights, and I use them in symmetry and I angle them only a little bit downwards. Yeah, so hold on. Roughly like that. Cool. Now for the rear lights, I use the other ones and flip them around, point them a little bit more downwards, making sure they're upright. Oops, yeah, something like that and I'll use the red light, sort of to imitate the daylight. Cool. So this is our rover more or less. And now uh, we want this rover to be remote tech capable. And for that, I'm posting two remote tech antennas. Trust me, you will need them as if you have not watch the reason why, watch the episode, I believe, six of my remote tech guide. And here I'm putting 
two reflectrons as well so that I don't have to drive with my antennas deployed. So the big antennas are used for submitting, transmitting science and the small ones are used to be chauffeured around. It doesn't hurt to have a few extra antennas. Now my fuse box will complain a little bit but uh, my energy is only being drained that much if I'm driving. So let's see without further ado I think the only last component that I want to introduce are basically parachutes because I'm basically airdropping my rovers on the planet so if I'm dropping it on Duna basically what I do is I just take the rover as is and I drop it with parachutes to land down mm, if you watched my episode 6 of my remote tech guide I will post the link in the description you would also see that I was using rover dudes deployable airbags and that I found to be quite convenient because they help cushion the blow but here we're not showing how to basically deploy an everything rover this is basically just a test to see how rover works so okay here we have our rover and let's see let's go forward just to remove I've got a couple of excess screens and infernal robotics put it on the side and let's extend it whoops what is that I believe that's the bug that I have seen uh, oh and I'm driving backwards which tells me that my probe core is put in reverse okay back to the drawing board okay so now what we need to do is basically turn the probe for probe core for 180 degrees and we have to get rid of these extra places so let's see <coughs> so okay the chassis is okay I just need to make sure that I flip back the probe core. oh hold on that's not what I wanted <clears throat> okay let's remove this and let's remove the battery so and now I'm turning it 90 180 degrees okay and now returning back the probe core returning back the chassis and let's put it to symmetry 90 degrees first let's see oh hold on oops it looks like it's backwards so no actually what I need is a mirror symmetry not the radial ones okay so I have to actually put the mirror symmetry rather than radial symmetry okay first we put the another battery on top parachutes back and uh, where was my probe core oh sorry not probe core command seat when the kerbals do come single something like that cool and then wait this is wrong I actually have to put this as uh, I have to put this as mirror symmetry just a second it's like this flip to mirror okay this looks much better now let's give it a go shall we let's just test the extension ok 
Okay, looks about right. And let's launch. Let's see if this time it will fare better. Okay, let's see. Turned on the lights, front white, back red, cool. And yes, we're going the right way forward. Let us just extend the chassis to make sure that we have much better stability. Yes, and then we're continuing. Let's drive over to the administration building and let's park over there. I really like the way this rover is designed. I mean, it has plenty of energy to drive around. Eventually, you will need to stop to recharge it. And also, just be mindful, you can load all sorts of scientific equipment. Okay, let's see. Oh, there's the hangar. Mm, yeah, hold on a second. I do not want to be at the hangar. Okay, never mind. Let's turn around. And you can see it turns around pretty good. And if you really want extra stability on other planets, then what you want to do is disable the rear wheels steering. But uh, for now it will do. So, just let us go behind and over back to the, not the administration building, but there's just like a swimming pool. I think it's a, is it a, an astronaut complex or something? Yeah, let's go over there. And we'll park on the parking lot. So, this has been a rather short episode, but it shows how to construct a rover that uses infernal robotics. I hope you liked it. If you liked the video, please do like the video. And for more Kerbal Space Program content, hit that subscribe button. There will be much more content coming. I will leave you now to watch the rest of uh, while I park this rover. Thank you very much for watching. This is Groundworks signing off.